Oh, you're up. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I'm late for work. Hey, don't know what you're getting snotchy with me for. It's butch we should all feel angry at. But his sneaky secret feelings for you. Yeah, well, I am angry at him. And her, and you, and the stupid vicar. I think right now there's no one that I'm not angry at. But right now, I'm looking at you. And if you don't back off, I might just take it out on you. It's not my fault. No, no. According to you, it's our butcher's fault. They're convenient, that is. Why couldn't you just let her go to work? You do try me sometimes, Zach. Hang on a minute. Who's been kept in the dark and made to look a mug? Who is the injured party here? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. I've every right. I wish you had it in you to feel as sorry for others. Instead of shouting and pushing and shoving people into the night. Seth! Come on, get a shift on, we late. It's a quarter to nine. <laughs> what are you supposed to be? Early Christmas box. Seth, do you know Butch Dingle's on my sofa? No, but you'll make an outplay. Betty, me dad kicked me out. It was either here or our barn. Well, what have you done? I thought you were the family hero. Aye, didn't last long, did it? Still, I can't help the way you feel, can you? No, love, but. Sometimes you have to learn to keep your feelings in check. Like I'm going to have to do when Seth walks through that door. Look, I won't be any more trouble. Where are you going? <sighs> Upstairs. Bathroom. Get yourself washed. I'll do you some brekkie. Thanks, Betty. I couldn't see my on the street. Thanks, love. Yeah, well, let's hope my generosity to Butch is reflected in the size of your Christmas present to me, Seth Armstrong. Hey? And I'll expect more than a pound of satsumas and a tin of axle grease this year. Paper and go, okay? Yeah. I'm just getting wound up before I go home. <laughs> Look at you. Never happier than when you're counting money. 35, 55, 95. 80, 85, 90, 95, 400. You were only on 200 last time. See what you've done. Go and get us a coffee. What's your last name, Diane? I'll show you, you're well, not in front of the kids. <laughs> Dad, careful. Oh, sorry. Scott, pass the pair of tights. Can you get them yourself? Well, I'm not dressed. Me and Andy don't mind, do we? It's up to her. You know, I won't help me, Andy, because I keep reminding him that he can't get a girlfriend. No one will have him because he's an arrogant little dork. You want these tights here, yeah, cheeky? Get up! Pack it in, you like kids! Is it not me? Shh. I won't tell if you won't. for a couple of hours. I've got an appointment with Dr Levy. Yeah, take as long as you like. Yeah, thanks. Uh, doctors, I don't know. You start off by being a bit confused. In bit time, they finish with you. You remember being kidnapped by aliens or worse. You seem overly happy with the way I was behaving before. I can't win. Honestly, Betty. Well, I just wonder if she should be working at all while she's being... You know. What? Trunk. If you had a toothache, what would you do? Oh, a dentist is totally different. Hey, Cathy has been through a trauma that neither of us are ever going to go through, I hope, and she's seen the best person she can to help her get over it. Now, what she wants is encouragement, not some old twaddle that you're reading in the papers. All right. No offence intended, I'm sure. <sighs> she thinks before she speaks. I know. I know. Thanks, anyway. It's great to know I've got someone besides Chris. Hello, Eric. Oh, uh, if it's about the uh, tea set you bought the other day, uh, look, it's in the uh, 
catalogue. I, I asked a fair price for it. We're very happy with the tea set. Oh, good. Well, what do you want, then? Uh, no, no, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, it's just that... Um, I really wasn't expecting to see you so soon. I'm afraid you rather taking me by surprise. Well, I'll go if you like. Oh, no, don't do that. It's lovely to see you again. Um, perhaps I can interest you in an Earl Grey on a Queen Anne? I don't... I... Oh, <laughs> the chair! I thought you meant some sort of biscuit. Anyway, I was wondering about a drink in the pub later. I need some advice about my holiday plans. Oh. Monday. Monday. Monday, look, I can't rest till we've sorted this. I'm not interested in your problems. Go away. You can't say that. Cos we're family. Some family. Look, I'm ashamed of our butch. So we just blame everything on Butch, give him the elbow and then we'll all be happy, is that it? No. Well, yeah, I don't know. He's deceived us all. And what would you done if he'd have told you how he felt before me and him got married? But I stopped the job, there and then. Even if he lost the house? <sighs> Thank you. You and me should have gone our separate ways months ago. We might even be speaking now. Well, we are speaking now. Me, you, Lisa. I was Sam when he got You're saved. clutching at straws, Uncle Zack. I'm sorry. But as far as I'm concerned, I have done everything I possibly can for this family. And I've never felt this miserable. I'm out. I've already seen him. I suppose you're going to have another go at me. It's for the best. Yeah, for Tara. I know you think I've betrayed you somehow. Forget it. Buying this house isn't the only thing on my mind at the moment. Hmm. Anything you'd like to share? Not really. Business or pleasure? Well, don't be silly, Laura. Business, what else? Hmm. Look, don't you ever feel like you'd like to live somewhere new? Make a fresh start? <sighs> my name will be on the deeds to this place. That's fresh enough, thanks. And I'm beginning to think that this auction's a fine idea. Good. Once I've spread a few rumours about dry rot in the house and the lamb being poisoned, I should be able to pick it up for pennies. Chris. Let's have a drink in the pub later. I've missed our little chats. <laughs> Cathy. Oh, you've had a very trying day. Now, come and sit yourself down, love. And let me make you a nice cup of tea. Oh, I feel fine, thanks, Betty. Of course you do, love. Um, about what I said earlier. Don't, don't, it's forgotten already. <laughs> Whatever you say, love. Memory's gone again. Do you think if I strangled her, I'd get away with it because I'm under a doctor? <sighs> so, come on then, talk to me. How did it go? You all right? Ashley's been very helpful. Tell me the truth, Biff. I've been a right cow, haven't I? Well, you've had every right. Oh, so I have then. Yeah, you've had your moments. You know, I told Dr. Levy about some of the things I've said to people. He, I felt so justified at the time, but I cringe when I think about it now. Yeah, Cathy, everybody just wants what's the best for you. I know. Well, Rachel, do you think she'd slam the door in my face if it went round? I need to talk to you. It's about our butch. Well, I didn't think you were going to invite me around for Christmas dinner. Look, Paddy, I'm trying to be straight with you. Butch has got himself in a right mess. Well, that makes two of you. He doesn't even know what he's saying. Well, it's sounding quite clear to me. Paddy. Well, what do you want me to say? I'm telling you that it's not true, and I'm asking you not to tell anybody. I bet you are. So even the dingle see the shame in marrying the cousins for money, then? Why don't you just say it? Because it's horrible. He's more like your brother. You've lived together for years. You mean you shout, you sound exactly the same. Right now, I want to kill our butch. But he's still a better bloke than you are. Should be good. At least he's got feelings. All he wants is to love someone and be loved back. Dead simple. But you destroyed all that for me. I never realised it before. But you're a pathetic snob with a filthy little sir of a mind. 
Your mum will be so proud of you. You're the one that's in the wrong here. I would have done anything for you. I would just pity you. You should put that on the mantelpiece. You right? Uh, keep kids away from fire. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's a present for Lynn's mum. She's very kindly asked me to share Christmas dinner with them. So this is like your way of telling them to get stuffed. It's the thought that counts. Yeah, we'll put your all thought on no taste. Anyway, they only probably want you there to do cooking. I heard that last can burn a salad. Hey, I'll cook, I'll wash up, I'll do it as long as I have a nice, normal, cosy day with a nice, normal, well, relatively normal family. Mandy, uh, what can we do for you? Actually, um, I need to speak to Marlon. It, it's private, Roy. Family business. Oh, no. Five people from school. Robert, we went to Leeds so Victoria could go and see Father Christmas. I'm sure your school friends were all doing exactly the same thing with their kids' sisters, so you're all as uncool as each other. I'm just going feeding the dogs. Is that supposed to help? Not time to feed the dogs yet, Andy. I'm not going next year. I'm just going upstairs. At this rate, you won't even be seeing next year. Andy, come and sit down. I haven't done anything. No, you haven't said anything either all day. We took you kids to Leeds for a special treat. All you've done is sit there with stony faces and moan all day. It's hard taking time away from the farm. Well, that's why I wanted to go feed the dogs. Will you shut up about the dogs? Sarah. And you, Jack. You've been no help either. I was going to make some mince pies this afternoon. Look, do you want us to give you a hand? No, Jack. I want you to do it. Oh. The three of you. Victoria and I are going to go and watch the telly. We deserve a treat. Thanks, lads. It's not that I'm scared of Butch. It's just the whole thing gives me the creeps. That we had these feelings for me and I didn't even have a clue. So, all this stuff he was spurting off to Paddy... He pretty much called me a pervert. You haven't actually... Pardon! I, I want to get my facts straight. I mean, you did marry the nutter. Yeah, but I didn't know he'd go all nutty on me. We were supposed to be doing it for the money. How could we ever get back to normal after all this? Mind you, I don't think I want things to get back to normal now. Take it from me, man. Splitting from the family and staying in a village ain't easy. I mean, if they knew you were talking to me now, well, it's uh, pretty lonely being a dingle non grata. I don't know what to do. I can't face any of them. Uncle Zach thinks that he's been really hard done by. And Lisa's feeling guilty for not speaking up when she should have done. I can see why he wouldn't want to talk to Butch. You could speak to him, Alan. Me? Are you cracked or what? My face might not be my fortune, but I'd like to hang on to it. He's stopping at Betty's. No, no, no. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't do any good. <laughs> so unfair. I lost Paddy because we had to get the family back together in the house. Now I've lost that and all. I've done everything I could and I've ended up with nothing. It must be worth a try. Mind if I come in? Depends what you've got to say. It won't take so long. Cathy, my feelings haven't changed about anything. Please try to understand. I honestly didn't mean any of those things I said. I've come round to say I'm really sorry. <laughs> I was hurtful and vicious, and I lashed out at the person closest to me. I've had time to think about yeah, it. Yeah, Cathy, so have I, and... I'm really glad you're feeling better. But I don't want to be in that position ever again. You won't be. Well, you can guarantee that. Like you just said, you lashed out the other person closest to you. So what are you trying to say? <sighs> maybe... Maybe I don't want to let you that close again. Oh, come on, Rachel, you can't mean that. <laughs> so you think that I don't mean what I say and I think that you don't mean what you say. What's the point? After all... You know, everything we've been through. Like me and Nicky off for your husband. You know, I'm beginning to think that that's perhaps the first really honest thing you've ever said to me. I 
can see you're not willing to forgive and forget. Well, if that's the way you want it. Oh, a whole hour in the bath. There's nothing like it. Oh, I'll go and have one myself. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I used all the water. Well, 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 look at this. I never thought you'd do it. Did we have a choice? Can I go to bed now? Don't you want your supper? I'm not hungry. Look, Andy, I was angry with all of you earlier on. I didn't mean to shout at you. I don't mind. I'm just tired. Are you feeling poorly? No. Honestly, I'm OK. Go on, then. Up you go. Robert, why don't you go and get ready for bed? I want my supper. <coughs> you can have your supper when you're ready for bed. Oh, yeah. Ned. Well, yeah, you've been busy, Sarah. Why is Andy so down in the dumps? Are they fighting? Oh, he's hardly said a word. Have you had words with him, Ned? Me? Hemp's in the bed. Well, maybe I'll go up and see him. I'll just leave him. They've both been huffy all day. Spoiled rotten, they are. I've had numerous invitations for Christmas lunch, but there's this flu bug going around, so... Here I am, free as a bird. We want to get that sorted out. Well, I hate the idea of anybody being alone over Christmas. Anyway, I've got this little project that I'm very interested in, and I was wondering if you'd lend me your expertise. You seem very knowledgeable when it comes to striking a good deal. Hey, laughing boy. Fried cheese butty, my house, 10 o'clock sharp, and I don't want you coming in rolling, roaring, or any other kind of drunk. I've not been drinking, Betty. I've just been sitting. You'll have all the time in the world for sitting when you're as old as me and Seth. At your age, you want to get out there and do something. Right, patching up. I'll see you later, love. Hi, <laughs> Before you were stopping in? Yeah, so did I till Mandy turned up, blubbing her eyes out. Marlon's been doing his priest bit with her all afternoon. Mm, yeah. Shall I go over? Only if you're a good swimmer. She's been for about six boxes of monkeys already. <laughs> All right, Butch. Tell you what, why don't you grab that table on there? I'll get this in. You're not going to be talking about that car all night, are you? Not really much to say. It's nearly finished. Not really much to say about anything around here. I know. I'm thinking about doing something stupid just for the scandal factor. Would me leaving home be enough scandal for you? Home as in the village? Yeah, I was thinking about it. But uh, I've just got used to having you around. Don't spoil it, Scott. I'd be gutted if you did a flit. Would you? I'm not even going to talk about it. Well, I'll uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh. Bye. Bye. Oh. I'd like a bottle of your finest claret from your cellar, please. I am celebrating. Are you going to share your good news? I spoil a wonderful surprise. Wonderful for who? It's the faith to see that Christmas is coming early this year. Tomorrow, in fact. Do you occasionally worry about your sanity, Eric? Hi, Butch. I was uh, just coming looking for you. I'll beat you to it then. What was you just saying then? Me? Nothing. Or... Oh, I was watching a, a film, you know, James Stewart on the bridge, guardian angel. He wants to live. So, I mean, the most important thing about that is he's got a very, it's got a very happy ending. <laughs> what did you want to see me about? Well, let's let's go and talk in the diner, right? Or, or, or the pub. I think I'll be seeing in public with you. We'll go inside. These mince pies are all squashed. I had to put them in the pocket as soon as they came out of the oven. Your legs are red hot. So, the Sugdens have been scrapping all day, have they? Makes a change for the perfect family. Well, they were all right. 
You don't have to keep sticking up for them, you know. I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm sorry. You get narky holed up here all day. So where have you been? Shopping in Leeds. I've got you this. Twenty quid. Tight fisted Sugdens will miss that. It's not from home. I had to listen to Mr. Windsor going on to get that. Him in the post office? Yeah. He stands beside the counter, putting his money into big piles. And every time the door opens, he blows it all over. Hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> the Wally. You know, uh, I had this horrible feeling when you turned up you were looking for someone to bash. Hey, don't worry, I won't tell Zach you were here. <laughs> It won't make any difference. Oh, I'm sick of my life, Marlon. I've made a mess of everything. What do you mean? Don't come the innocent with me. I know what's been going on, you know. You've seen her, haven't you? You're talking about Mandy. We did sort of bump into each other, yeah? Did she say anything about me? Look. I know I haven't handled this very well, but given time, she'll get used to me and her. You'll have a long wait. She doesn't want you, Butch. I'm not saying she don't like you. You're wrong, Marlon. You weren't there. Where? When we've been together. She talked to me. We've been out. On dates, just like a normal couple. Just like you and Lynn. The thing about Lynn is, she feels the same way about me as I feel about her. Yeah. Well, I don't know why, because you treat her like muck most of the time. Thought we were talking about you. Well, that's just it, Marlon. We are. You see, I care about Mandy. I try to protect her feelings. I put her first. But you, you're not but scum. You betrayed your family. You tell your own grandmother to get what you want. And you've got a lass. It ain't right. You didn't write. You know, I've really got to be somewhere in a minute, Butch. Where have you got to be? Are you meeting Mandy? Are you both going to have a good laugh at me? I can assure you there's nothing funny about this. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Marlon? Mandy and Lynn running after you. I think my horizons are a bit broader than fancying my own cousin. Are well, you saying there's something wrong with that? No, I don't know what I'm saying. I didn't want anything to do with this in the first place. Ah! You thought you could be the big hero, didn't you, Marlon, and help out? Look at you! I hate you! Just do it. <laughs> oh. Oh. 